this. So when the Kavanaugh hearings were going on, I could just look at my Facebook feed and scroll down and every other post was about Kavanaugh, mostly from my female Facebook friends. Some of them are people like I went to middle school with and high school with, college with. Every single one of them that was a woman was aggressively posting about the evils of Kavanaugh and rape culture and believe women and all these, you know, hot take memes. This one was shared by a former coworker of mine. My favorite part of the Kavanaugh controversy is how people who are absolutely convinced they know exactly what happened in Judea 2,000 years ago have gaslit many Americans into believing it is literally impossible to know what happened at an event in 1983. Oh, the hot take. I'm burning from this hot take. Give me a minute to recover. Seriously though, the idea is that Republicans are all religious. They're all just silly. Let's just make them sound silly. Even though you have someone like me, who doesn't agree with them on the Kavanaugh situation, and I'm not religious. Uh, I'm not convinced I know exactly what happened in Judea 2,000 years ago. These things have literally nothing to do with each other. It's just completely asinine, but this person shared it on their Facebook with the thought that like everyone they're friends with is going to see it and be like, yes, agree, like, it's just really alienating to see things. I mean, when I see things from people that I went to middle school with, it's kind of like, okay, whatever. I mean, this is sad, but I don't have to interact with you in real life. But when it comes to like that thing from a former coworker, it, the thing is, it's like, they're not just talking about Kavanaugh. You know, they're not talking about this particular case. They just continue to share things that are basically, you know, about the Kavanaugh thing, but it's just about this like wider rape culture idea. A good friend of mine shared something where a researcher asked, what steps do you guys take on a daily basis to prevent yourselves from being sexually assaulted? So you have the male column where it's like, nothing, I don't think about it. And then the female column is just like, you know, filled with all these things. And it's like pretty standard things like, don't go jogging at night, always carry a cell phone, check the back seat before getting in a car. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do these things. And so what? Women and men are not the same. Women are physically weaker. We have to worry about different things than men do. That's just biologically how it is. We don't know if any potential strange male walking down the street is a predator or not. 99% of them aren't, but just to be sure, you take those little precautions. And it's like not that big of a deal. Now, when I was a feminist, I thought it was a huge fucking deal. And I would have shared a post like this and been like, yes, exactly. But since I have left the religion that is feminism, it's like, yeah, okay, if I'm walking alone at night and there's a dude on the same side of the street as me, if I have the opportunity to walk to the other side of the street, I probably will. I may not, but I probably will, just in case. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't take much effort. I walk on the side of the sidewalk that's closest to the street so that I have an exit, so I can't get pinned up against a wall. These are all things that my father taught me because he grew up in the city. I live in the city. Depending where you live, the things that you'll have to do are different. But it's not like men don't have their own burdens to bear, and it's not like men don't get assaulted. Women are also higher on neuroticism, more we're sensitive to negative emotion. We were designed to protect vulnerable humans. So I don't think it's unreasonable to think that women on the whole are more sensitive to threats and danger than men are. Men should probably take more of these precautions, and some men who live in cities probably do take some of these precautions, like don't go jogging at night. You know, even if I acknowledge this is terrible, that women have to do this, even though they always act like if they didn't have to do this, women would be curing cancer because all the brain space that they have to use to like avoid getting assaulted is what prevents them from accomplishing great things with their lives. There was another one. Ladies, a question for you. What would you do if all men had a 9 p.m. curfew? Dudes, read the replies and pay attention. My first thought is, if all men had a 9 p.m. curfew, then women would, you know, their dating lives would certainly be different because you wouldn't be able to stay out for dinner or at a bar that late because he'd have to go home. So that's number one. You just have to go to his place all the time. And that seems really fucking a lot safer than, you know, meeting at a public place just on the practical, obvious level, that's just completely asinine. So here are the couple of things they would do. I'd take all the public transit. Really? Really. 
Long, calm, solo nighttime walks. That would be amazing. Really, your life is going to be so improved by being able to walk by yourself at night. That would be worth making all men be at home by 9 p.m. That is how you would like to wield your authoritarian power, is so that you can take a fucking walk by yourself at night. I have a newsflash for you. You can already do that. Just don't wear headphones while you do it. Don't walk in a dangerous neighborhood and just like keep your fucking wits about you. No one is preventing you from doing it. Go do it right now. You'll enjoy it, but you don't need to make all men go to bed at 9 p.m. That's like personally my fucking nightmare. I wouldn't be able to go dancing because all the dudes have to be home at 9 p.m. Basically, women would only be able to have a nighttime social life with other women, which for me personally sounds like my version of Greek hell, but I can see how a lot of feminists probably think that sounds like heaven. Oh yeah, this chick. The reminder of how much of my life I put on hold because it just doesn't feel safe because men. Who hurt you? Like, honestly, I read all these things and I'm like, who hurt you? Some man hurt you and you're scared and you're bitter and you want to act in an authoritarian way to make sure you don't ever get hurt again. And like, I feel you, but you don't get to do that. I'm sorry, but you need to see a fucking therapist. Take it from someone who has seen more than one fucking therapist. Do it. It's good for you. You will feel better. You will become a better human and you will stop wanting to bring the hammer of the law down on 50% of the population. But like I saw this on not just like people from high school, but people that I know and they're like this. That is just something that I don't get about modern feminism now that I'm out of it. Like I remember being in it and I remember that headspace, but at the same time, it's been long enough now that I feel so detached from it and I don't see it being resolved in any good way. On the one hand, feminists say women are strong, we're super strong and amazing, but it's just men have the boot of the patriarchy on our neck. We just have to tell the men to take the boot off of our neck, then we can be the strong women that we are. No, if you're a strong woman, then you don't need men to do stuff for you. You just do stuff. Now you have to be realistic. You have to be aware of the fact that you are physically weaker than men. But that doesn't mean that you can't walk at night. I walk at night all the time. Knock on wood, I haven't been assaulted. I don't put my life on hold because I don't feel safe because men, okay? There was a couple of articles from Vox. The one article that came out is called All the Men Who Never Assaulted Me. The subheadline, I met a guy at a party. I told him no. Nothing happened. That is normal. And I was like, oh, maybe this will be a reasonable article because yes, I agree. That is normal. You go to parties and dudes aren't trying to assault you. And very counter to the feminist narrative. But then she goes on, of course, to be super feminist and basically say that the only reason that she was never assaulted is because she didn't meet a predator. I'm reading this and going, I mean, you might be right because you're basically acting the way you've described yourself as a prey animal. When I was 16, I went to a house party. I was a garden variety insecure teenager. I didn't like the way I looked in a bathing suit. My hair always seemed wrong. Years of intense childlike self-analysis led me to the conclusion that I must be unattractive and I worried that meant no one would ever like me. This idea seemed, for reasons I could not name, fatal. That night I was determined to overcome my invisibility. So she puts on a low cut shirt and dark red brown lipstick that she'd only ever worn standing alone in her bedroom, trying to determine if I might ever be the sort of girl who wore lipstick. That night, the makeup felt like a costume. When someone offered me a bottle full of strawberry kiwi flavored liquid, I drank it quick. This is like the plot of like every teen movie, TV show, etc. When you go to the party and someone hands you a drink and you drink it, things are not gonna go well. Alcohol leads you to make bad decisions. And if you want to do that, if you want to take the risks that are involved with risky activity, then fine. But like if bad things happen, I'm not saying that they should have happened to you, that you deserve to have them happen to you, but don't act like you were just strolling down the street 
in broad daylight or you were just skipping through a meadow and then this thing happened to you. You were aware of the risks involved in putting yourself in this situation. I always read these things and go, God, like I had my struggles with my mother, but at least she and my father prepared me for life because this never would have happened to me in high school. I never got in any kind of situation like this because I wasn't allowed to go to parties. So there was that. But even if I had, I had made a decision that I wasn't going to drink or do drugs because I didn't want to lose control of my actions. I saved that for college when I felt like I was going to be more of an adult. Now I made a whole host of really terrible decisions in college where it's surprising that I'm alive. Like I probably should have died at some point in college given how many terrible decisions that I've made. So I speak from experience in saying, I take personal responsibility for all those things I did. No one forced me. And if something had happened to me, it wouldn't have been my fault, but I would have put myself in a situation that made that consequence highly likely. So putting yourself in clothes and makeup that you don't feel comfortable in, that you know are designed to attract the opposite sex. You want to attract the opposite sex because you feel unattractive and I've been there. So you put that on because you want the attention, but you don't actually know how to handle the attention if you get it. You don't know how to set your own boundaries. You don't know how to say no. You get the situation where she kind of hems and haws and then the guy says, well, that isn't really yes. And he lets her go and she frames it like that accurately because she's acting like a prey animal because if he hadn't said no if he just said maybe she's just shy and he made that decision about how the communication was going because it was ambiguous she clearly wouldn't have been prepared to set a boundary and to say no or to slap him or to scream if it got that extreme but even to just basically say no i'm not interested because she wanted the attention because she felt invisible because she wanted to be seen by the opposite sex and to be seen as attractive so he's giving her the attention but she's not prepared to actually go have sex with him and so if you put yourself in that situation you're playing with fire because the communication between men and women as much as the consent people would like to tell you i'm sorry but they're wrong it is body language and there's a lot of instances for miscommunication and you have to be able to use your words or angle your body in a way that says no. So I just like I read this article and I just it was shared by someone that I know in real life and just the idea that rape culture isn't really a thing in the way that they describe it and that there's all these nuances and that they completely almost never talk about personal responsibility when it comes to women and their sexual behavior. It's just do whatever you want, you make whatever choices you want, and then you can be really surprised when you put yourself in a situation where bad things happen to you. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to parties in high school if you want to, and if you want to drink alcohol, fine, but you're putting yourself in this situation with this Kavanaugh thing kind of hanging over everyone. I just don't talk about it. Anytime someone brings it up or they bring up anything that has to do with like sexual assault, etc., I just change the subject because I don't want to lie. So I just avoid the topic altogether because you can disagree with feminists about a whole host of things. But if you try to disagree with them about abortion or rape culture, then you are in for a world of hurt. That's all I got to say.